Because there's toxicity and then there's immunotoxicity. And the difference is that toxicity occurs at more gross levels and affects essentially every organism. Immunotoxicity only occurs when you've broken tolerance and developed a defensive hypersensitivity. But when you have a hypersensitivity, now you have to clean house or clean the toxin out much more carefully because the immune system's a high amplification system. And especially if small amounts of those toxins, the toxic metals, the persisting pollutants that are hormone disruptors, the volatile organic chemicals that are solvent residues, uh, the um, harmful molds, the radioisotopes, when those are coming in in very low levels but enough for the immune system to recognize the substance as foreign, then you can have the paradoxic situation where on classic toxicology testing, the person does not have a huge body burden, but on immunotoxicity testing, they're hypersensitive, and therefore they've really got a clean house with the high sulfur compounds that complex with the toxic metals and help get them out, with the ascorbate that helps chaperone the toxic metals out, uh, with low temperature saunas that help get the solvent residues out of the fat pads. Uh, with low temperature saunas that help get the persisting pollutants out of the fat pads, uh, with uh, various kinds of foods, including our high sulfur foods, uh, that help complex with uh, the mold constituents or mold products, uh, radioisotopes, uh, and help chaperone those safely out of the body. So we begin with physiology first always. Physiology and nature always gives us a solution. We need to make staples out of condiments so that we can get the toxic materials out of our body, uh, especially those to which we have immunotoxic, high sensitivity, high amplification reactions. 